Good morning, church. Welcome to our Easter service. I'm glad you all could be here. And, uh, and everything is found in your bulletin today. Our final hymn will be replaced by our singing of the Hallelujah Chorus. And everybody's welcome to come join us who are familiar with that as well. And thank you and welcome to everybody online. Uh, some of you as far as Paris today. So I'm so grateful for your joining us uh, online today. Please stand as you're, well, as you're able for our thanksgiving for baptism. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. In the waters of baptism, we have passed over from death to life. With Jesus Christ, we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God, who was, who is, and is yet to come. We thank you, God, for the river of life, for flowing freely from your throne, through the earth, and through the city, through every living thing. You rescued, Noah, you rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy and your sin is drowned out forever. You open the gate of righteousness and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ, you calm the trouble of the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places, you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe in this water and wake in your church. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, to be honor, glory, praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. As we gather on this side of the grave, let us rejoice in this day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad, for this is the day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we pray, God of mercy, we no longer look for Jesus among the dead, for he is alive and has come, become the Lord of life. Increase in our minds and hearts the risen life we share with Christ, and help us to grow as your people towards the fullness of eternal life with you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. may be seated. For those of us who were here Friday evening for the Tenebrae service, I read from the Passion, the Gospel of John, and I was gripped for the first time in my 75 years by the statement of Christ at the cross, his last words. Today is a much happier day. So I'll say happy Easter. And let us read. The first reading is from Acts, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is accept acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel preaching peace by Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how we went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are all witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and Jerusalem. 
They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The Psalm, Isaiah 65. Please read responsibly. I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The former things shall not be remembered or come to mind. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating. For I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and delight in my people. No more shall the sound of weeping be heard in it or the cry of distress. No more shall there be in it an infant that lives but a few days, or an old person who does not live out a lifetime, or one who dies at a hundred years will be considered a youth, and one who falls short of a hundred will be considered accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another have it. They shall not plant and another eat. For the days of the tree shall the days of my people be. And my chosen shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain or bear children for calamity. For they shall be offspring blessed by the Lord and their descendants as well. Before they call, I will answer. While they are yet speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, but the serpent, its food shall be dust. They shall not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain, says the Lord. The second reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. If for this life only we have hoped in Christ, we are of all people most to be pitied. But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have died. For since death came through a human being, the resurrection of the dead has also come through a human being. For as all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ, but each in his own order, Christ the first fruits, then at his coming those who belong to Christ. Then comes the end when he hands over the kingdom to God the Father, after he has destroyed every ruler and every authority and power. For he must reign until he has put all his enemies under his feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death.
The Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter. On the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood before them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee, that the son of man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returning from the tomb, they told all this to the 11 and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb, stooping and looking in. He saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come on up for the time with children. Excellent. Nice to see you. Oh, my big child still comes up. <laughs> Wonderful. Always my boy, aren't you? Yeah, thank you. Oh, this makes me cry too. Well, there we go. Good morning to you. Hello. For me, it's basketball season. We just got done with March Madness. It's playoff basketball. Couldn't be much better. I just love watching the basketball. My team won yesterday, go Timberwolves, and it is a good time. And one of the things that I watch when I watch basketball, some, sometimes in football as well, whenever a player goes down, when they're playing basketball, they shoot, they get fouled, they're on the ground, what usually happens? All the other players come up to pick them up, right? Usually if someone falls down, everybody comes around and helps them stand up again. And each time there's some kind of foul, everybody's there to help them come back and play again. And today, Easter is one of those days. Easter is one of those days where we understand that all of us fall down now and then, but we are here as a people to pick each other's up. This is our championship game. This is our championship round. Christ has triumphed, and here we are risen like Christ. And so maybe, maybe that is our new job. Maybe it's not our job to go like clean up after everyone, but truly just help them up. Find ways to help each other up when they're down. Just like on that playing field when something may happen, may we be able to surround each other with such grace and to help them up. Let us pray. Dear God, I give thanks for the help up today in this Easter resurrection. Amen. Oh, can you help me up? <laughs> Thanks. Oh, I didn't set that up, by the way. <laughs> Thanks for coming up, you guys. I always like snarky angels, right? Like, the angel's funny. Like, these celestial people in today's Bible, it's funny. Like, they're going to the grave, and they all, the ladies know what they're supposed to be doing. They got a job to do. They brought all the tools to do it. And the, and the, and the angels go, why are you looking, among the, why are you looking for the, the living amongst the dead? That's snarky. And it's funny because it's unexpected. 
They don't know what is up for them. They believe they know what's up for them, but they're not sure what's going on once they get there. The stones roll away, and the angels, whoever this transfigured experience is going on there, has this snarky comment, well, they don't know what's going on. There's a lot of snarky angels in the Bible, often telling us things we're not quite prepared for, often breaking into our reality to break down the truths for us when we can't see them for ourselves. Why do we look for the living amongst the dead? Because guess what? We, we look for the dead all the time. That's kind of what we do. It's kind of who we are. We like to find it. We're kind of, we're, we're, you know, we, 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 it's, Here's how I explain it. So many times we, we like to do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, right? We want to do the same thing over and over again, expecting that this time it's going to work. This time it's going to get the solution I'm going to get. This time this diet's going to work. This time this life change is going to work. We want to just keep on doing the same thing over and over again, and, but someday it's going to work out. In some books, that's the definition of insanity. To expect this, a different thing to happen from doing the same thing over and over again. And the woman knew what they were supposed to be doing because burial rituals at that time were pretty much standardized. So Jesus gets put on the cross. Now, usually for, for Roman crucifixions, they let the body hang there and let the birds do their work. Because once you're on the cross, it's, you're supposed to be assigned to the rest of everyone to don't do the things that that person did. You hung on the cross, the birds take away your carcass, and you are a threat to the rest of the society. Don't do what this guy did, or that's your outcome. But things changed right away. You see, they have a Jewish carcass on the cross during their holy day would not just be an insult to Jesus, but would be an insult to the rest of Jesus's people or the whole Jewish culture. And even Pilate is smart enough to go, uh, -uh that's not a good idea. So a few of Jesus's friends grab him off the cross, bury him as quick as they can to get him in the, the tomb. Did you ever think that might not have been Jesus's tomb? What if they were like grave robbers even? Taking maybe what wasn't even theirs. It was just an empty grave close to the cross. They take him down, put him away as fast as he can, load him up with all the perfume necessary for the moment, but things aren't finished. It's not over yet. The Jewish rites of tradition are long-standing and have a lot of expectations about what it's supposed to be, and it's not over yet, but they cannot work on Saturday. So that Saturday passes, and the women know their job, know the story, know the tradition, knows what history is supposed to do, know what, what their place in society was meant to be. So they take their there's their, their uh, nards and smelly oils and go down to finish the burial process. And they see the mouth of the cave open and they go in there and meet those snarky angels. But the snarky angels change their job, don't they? They go there and the job isn't left anymore. They don't have anything to quote unquote do in the grave anymore. But they have now something to do. And according to the scripture, they tell everyone, right? It says they go and tell the apostles and almost everybody that they meet. They go out into the story and they're telling everyone and they get to the point where they're telling the disciples or the apostles at this moment, as Luke is calling them. And they say that they don't believe them. That's an idle tale. They've done their own research. It just doesn't make sense. Now, this probably isn't the first time they weren't believed, right? Probably won't be the last. They're probably darn used to it at this time, right? And so whoever they are believe it's an idle tale. 
and that somehow these women aren't worth believing or their stories not worth believing. It's not even worth checking in if it could be true. But there's one. Now, we don't know where Peter was with the they, right? It says they don't believe it, and they believe it's a idle tale. But right after that, Peter is willing to at least take them up on going to sea. Going to sea for himself as he goes down into the tomb and becomes amazed by the experience himself. He doesn't even get the snarky tale. He doesn't even get the snarky experience. He gets his own experience to justify the story in which he's been told, and they leave amazed. They don't even have any firsthand account of Christ yet. But they are astounded by the resurrection story already. And as far as we know, they are changed. The women came there with a certain job to do, but they became the first missionaries of the Scripture. They became the first preachers to the crowd. They became the first voice of God to the rest of the people in the, in the legacy of Christ. They became the first missionaries to the wild. And even they were said to have an idle tale. But Jesus ultimately has the final authority through God. And we haven't seen him yet. The story continues in the rest of our Easter season where he meets them on the road. He meets them on the mountaintops. He, he gathers around the food and the table and he breaks open scripture for them for 40 different appearances. But right then, they don't really know. They just have hope. They just have this legacy of the story, right? Because first, they go to the grave because they don't remember they don't remember what Christ has been telling them for chapters upon chapters. They don't remember the stories of Christ. They don't remember their own darn brother who was raised from the dead as this great foreshadowing. They don't remember what's really in front of their eyes. They don't see the, all the times in which they have been lifted up and lifted up each other. And how this story could be a continuation of God's ultimate lifting up of society over and over again. But they go there to bury the dead because that's what they're used to. I think sometimes we think we go to church and it's like a funeral every Sunday. We go there because the hymns are comfortable, the story's good, the people are friendly. It's like a mausoleum. It's like we're buried within these stones just waiting to get out. So many times church feels like we go there to just reflect on the past, reflect on some kind of dead story, and just put more dirt on it this time, make it pretty. We go there, and it's like kicking a dead horse over and over again. Instead of being transformed by the story again, instead of, it's not a funeral, it's a party. It's an everlasting party, now and forever. We as a church, it's like, you know, we go there like wanting to bring our alms and our, and our stinky stuff again, to just bury it over and over again. But our job is to leave it again with the story of transformation, to preach again to our neighbors and our friends about being liberated and to be believed as a people. We get so caught up with the way we've done it, with full Sunday school classrooms, with full pews, with full budgets and, and, and large quantities of things and people. We get so used to what we used to do that we don't understand what God is doing. What God is doing next, or what that next hope is, or what that next resurrection looks like. This is, you know, Jim just said, this is the first time we've had Easter here for three years in this sanctuary. We've come back into this story again as a community to be lifted up. You come back today not to some kind of funeral, but to be changed for a different experience. If you came here just to feel good, it's not just a feel-good story. It's a liberation one. To hold each other up, to hold Christ up. Because as Corinthians says, this is just the beginning of the end. 
We're here to banish darkness. We're here to get over death. We're here to move on from where we were to be transformed into what is becoming. We're here to listen again to the story of the females as they tell us the good news of Jesus Christ to be transformed into the amazingness of the gospel. And because we're here because we have seen the problems. We've seen the trials and tribulations. We have been affected by all the racism and sexism and everything that's been around us. We have been affected by all the hate and hatred that completely binds us now and then. We are here to be liberated from each one of those things because we want that to be the last time that racism wins. That's the last time that sexism wins. That's the last time that prejudice wins. We want to be the overcoming resurrection force in this world not to bury our dead. We're here because we are living, because we have hope. Because this will not be the last time we gather here at Lake Edge. It won't be the last time that Christ will be proclaimed. This won't be the last time that the church will gather in Jesus' name for the resurrection, because the resurrection is ongoing. That is the everlasting life. Now, some of, some of you know I like to sing now and then. And I couldn't take up the opportunity of doing it on Easter. So, this is a song that I used uh, that's uh, been rewritten. It, you got the, you got the uh, words in your, in your book. I'll invite you to sing in about, you know, at the end of it with me, okay? Thanks for human me. After the last tear falls, after the last secret's told, after the last bullet tears through flesh and bone, after the last child starves, after the last kid walks the boulevard, after the last year that's been just too hard, there is love, 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 love. There is love, 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 love. There is love. After the last disgrace, after the last slap to save some face, after the last brutal jab from a poison joke, after the last dirty politician, after the last meal down at the mission, after the last lonely night in prison, there is love, 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 love. There is love, 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 love. There is love. And in the end, the end, there's oceans and oceans of love and love again. We'll see how the tears that have fallen we're caught in the palms of the giver of love and the lover of all and we'll look back on these tears as old tears after the last tear falls there is love after the last tear falls there is love after the last plan fails, after the last siren wails, after the last young husband goes off to join the war, and after the last this marriage is over, after the last young one's innocence is stolen, and after all these years of silence that won't let a heart open, there is love, 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 love. There is love, 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 love. There is love. And after the last sham trial, after the last protest mile, after the last man's planning and the women yearning to be heard, and after the last I did my own research, after the last empty pew at church, after the last stone open 
that won't let a heart open. There is love, 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 love. There is love, 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 love. There is love. And in the end, the end, there's oceans and oceans of love and love again. We'll see how the tears that have fallen were caught in the palms of the giver of love and the lover of all. And we'll look back on these tears as old tears. And after the last tear falls, there is love. Sing that with me, church. Come on. After the last tear falls, there is love. You can do better than that. Come on now. After the last tear falls, there is love. Now you're feeling it. Let's go. After the last tear falls, there is love. One more time. After the last tear falls, there is love. Amen, church.
Let's confess the faith we share in our affirmation. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, and works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect and creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope, in life and death, in life and not death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. On this day of resurrection joy, let us offer our prayers for ourselves and our neighbors and our world. Renewing God, the good news of your resurrection changed the world. Give church leaders and all the baptized the same excitement as the women of the tomb and inspire us to share in your abundant life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sustaining God, your creation bounds with joy, signs of life in the budding trees and newborn creatures. Provide fertile soil, ample sunlight, and nourishing rain for the growth of plants that provide farmers with a plentiful harvest. Lord, in your mercy, Sheltering God, strengthen and sustain all who support vulnerable people across the world, especially those experiencing war. Empower governments, agencies, international organizations, and provide for refugees and migrants forces to leave their homelands. Lord, in your mercy. Encouraging God, you do new things among us. We pray for those gripped by fear or anxiety or suffer in any way, especially those on our prayer page. Send us your healing presence to places of hunger and pain, illness and overwhelming sorrow. Lord, in your mercy. Surprising God, you offer endless ways for us to delight in your grace. Give this community a faith that helps us up a sense of joy and wonder and exploring all kinds of new avenues of faith, formation, worship, and discipleship. Lord, in your mercy. We offer to you these petitions and to those who carry it in their hearts, trusting in your abundant and ever-present mercy. Amen. Let us share a moment of peace with each other. Peace be with you share a moment of peace with our neighbors. Peace everyone on Zoom. Peace everyone. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace. Peace be with you.
Thank you, choir. Thank you. Please stand as you're able for offering players. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in the present in the peaceable reign that you have welcomed us all to your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord your God. It's indeed right in our duty and our joy that we should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ, the true pastoral land, and gives himself a way to take away the sin of the world, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so, with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and the deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. And praise to you for your spirit poured out on all nations. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant, and my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember the Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. With your people of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, the sun and the moon and the stars, we praise you, O God. Blessed the Holy Trinity now and forever. Amen. And we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, but deliver us from evil. The kingdom and the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Taste the see that the Lord is good. Go ahead and open up your Ziploc bags. Starting May 1st, we'll be doing communion around the rail. So how exciting will that be? But until that time, we'll get there. 
For those who haven't used these before, I encourage you to kind of open up that bottom part and let the wafer pop in your hands there. The body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you. And we pray. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us this spiritual food, the body and blood of Christ. All who come to you will not hunger. All who believe in you will not thirst. Empowered by this sacrament, send us back into the world to do the work you have given us to do, to share the gospel and to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, church. <laughs> be seated for the announcements. Yep. Whew. Gotta yeah. catch my breath after that one. Um, so a quick announcement about the singing of the Hallelujah Chorus from Handel's Messiah, which we are going to resume the tradition of today, and I'm so excited I can't even tell you. Uh, but I, I just have to anecdote really quickly three years ago when we, two years ago when we first started the lockdown and it was sudden and new and Pastor Martha, our intimate interim pastor at the time, when we recorded Easter that year, Jay and I and Pastor recorded the service. I said, should we put in a recording of Handel's Messiah, the Hallelujah Chorus? Because everyone's expecting it. And she said, oh no, we'll be back in the sanctuary in a couple weeks. We'll sing it then. It'll still be the Easter season. You know what the best part is? It still is the Easter season. Amen. Oh, and I'm so excited for this. Um, a bit of logistics. Normally we come up during communion, but communion, again, is different nowadays. Um, if you'd like to join us, we have many copies of the score and the music. All are welcome. doesn't matter if we haven't practiced it. It's a singing of great joy and love. And I have music for you. And as Pastor gives the rest of the announcements, feel free to come on up and join us. Fill in on the choir anywhere, and we will sing to the praise of Easter. This is 400 year old music, but the sentiment and the words are a resurrection that happens every day, every Sunday, every year. Come join Amen. us sing and let's uh, Come see Come on down, you're the next contestants on Handel's Right. No pressure, no one's watching, but come on. As you look through your bulletin, you will see the different offerings and thanks to Ron and, um, and uh, and Mary David Smith, who give our flowers today, and all the wonderful work of our wonderful work of our congregant Altar Guild. We have Earth Day coming up, Earth Day cleanup on the 23rd. So come on down for that. We're also having a funeral service for um, Doug Seifert on the 23rd, and for Jerry Jackson on the 30th. Dialogue articles are due on the 21st as well. Our Forte's Bible studies start back up today, so come on up for that. Uh, start up on Tuesday for that and Thursday for that, so come in for that. you see that down there. Next week, we'll have adult faith formation. Uh, we're going to be hearing from Gretchen Baumgart, our uh, communication ambassador. She also has a doctorate and an MDiv from Notre Dame, so she'll be talking about ecology and uh, the feminist voice for ecology. So come on back for next week. 
for the adult faith formation there. And time to the children's faith formation starts up next week as well. We are continuing our mask, pro, uh, mask policy through the end of May with the hopes that summer brings better numbers. Um, any other announcements that I'm missing so far today, church? Oh, please use the friendship pads, uh, pass them down uh, to sign in today so we can say hi to you over time. Anything else that I'm missing, church, today? That made ample time to fill up. <laughs> I got to make space for me over there. Let us sing our handles, Messiah. Go ahead and take a seat for now. Everybody else.
Please stand as you're able for our charge and our benediction and our dismissal. Like Christ has arisen, we too arise. We are lifted from this place and into a world in need of a risen life. We have been transformed as a people lifted, given this ground to move on, given an air to breathe, and mission of, a work, of the work to do. We are lifted not only for our own good, for the good of the world. Go from this place, fueled by the arisen Christ. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Go in peace. Christ is risen. Christ is risen Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God.